This is a big moment. You're about to get an introduction to graphing big data. This is my favorite topic of the week because we are going to transform numerical data into beautiful, meaningful graphs. In particular, we are going to focus on histograms. Okay, go to a new collab dot research dot google dot com new notebook and let us sensibly title this histograms and i want you to go ahead and copy in the url and the link and let's go ahead and load it so this is a climate change url i'm going to add in some text headers for this notebook and this one will be entitled loading climate change data that hashtag there. When it comes to loading the data itself, my hope is that you all are getting accustomed to the steps. And maybe you don't need me to tell you. If you're not used to it yet, you will be soon. So import pandas as PD. And the important step is this df equals PD dot read underscore CSV URL. And let's take a look at the climate change data, what do we have? All right, so we have some sensible columns like year and month and temp for temperature, aerosols. Then we have a bunch of other columns, okay? So I can tell you that CFC stands for chlorofluorocarbons. You definitely do not want them in the environment. Um, at least if you're trying to protect it and, you know, create a healthy space for people to live and breathe. Um, some of the others, I'm also not sure. If we type in, like, MEI, you know, let's see what comes up. Is MEI a thing? Um, how about MEI? Is, is that a chemical compound? Ideomethane. So it's a kind of methane. And then if you look at some of the others, like CO2, if you're not sure, CO2... I feel like I should know CO2. That's simply carbon dioxide. Yes, it is. And so on. So you can get information on these individual columns by looking them up. We're going to get to know them by graphing them. If I go back to CO2, it says, by the way, um, at higher levels, CO2 affects productivity, sleep, and infectious disease. So I don't know that it's always the case that higher is the worst, but maybe. Okay, so what is a histogram? Um, I think the best way, instead of me trying to tell you in advance, is like, let's go ahead and graph them. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's get a new header in here. And let's title it Basic Histograms, maybe. Or how about the default? Not like basic, let's do the default. So these are default histograms. And by default, what I mean is it's using the defaults that matplotlib, which is a new library, is going to provide. So matplotlib is our primary grapher. Okay, so import that with me right now. You ready? It's a little bit of a mouthful. So import matplotlib, and there it is, dot pyplot is plt. Big mouthful, but it's going to be plt. Um, it's Python's plotting library, okay? There you go. You see it on there, select it. Otherwise, just type it in. Now, plotting it is actually somewhat simple. What we're going to do is we're going to plot a column of data. So first, import matplotlib. I'm going to comment each of the lines so that you understand what we're doing here. Now, we're going to plot histogram. And in effect, we could choose the column. So why don't we try, we're just looking at CO2. Why don't we try CO2 and look at the CO2 distributions? So here's how you do it. You got to access, well, it's PLT. So we're invoking the matplotlib library. There's more than one way. But plt.hist for histogram. Actually, histogram, it looks like. See how it should, this is the advantage of this, you know, auto-completion. You can see that histogram is an option. And what we're going to show the histogram of is a column. So in this case, we will try DF, and there is, say, CO2. Finally, um, it actually, 
so this showing histogram is a little bit weird because it will show without it, but it also shows some extra stuff that you don't want. But that's it. That's the default, those three steps. So we're going to see what this gives us before we look at steps to improving it. No, it, okay, gave me an auto completion there and I went for it. I told you it was a good thing. Oh, you know what the issue is? I hadn't loaded PLT yet. So I think it's just PLT.hist. And why I hadn't loaded PLT yet? Because I hadn't run this though. So this is a distribution of the CO2 levels. Okay, now I don't want to go in depth analyzing this with you yet because yeah, here I'm talking about beautiful graphs. This is not beautiful yet. We're going to make adjustments to make it look really nice. But just to show you in general, like what's the idea? Well, if you look at the x-axis, what they're saying is, you imagine that they're in intervals of five, okay? Between 340 and 345, you know, CO2 levels, I'm not sure what that unit is, um, there are 18 cases, okay? You can see that most cases are toward the middle, about, you know, around 355 to 360. There are over 40 rows that are in those values and so on. So it's the general idea behind a histogram. Um, okay, so how can we make this better? Well, several things we can do. All right, so I'm going to show you all the, my basic improvements right now. Let's do a new text header. And we are going to use, let's call it Seaborn Improvements. Seaborn is a library that works on top of matplotlib. It's really nice because it works with matplotlib, but it has kind of extra nice stuff. So we're going to import Seaborn. And the way you do that is import Seaborn as SNS. Okay, and that's just the norm. Don't ask me. I'm not sure what SNS stands for. You know, whenever you want to know things, right? If it's not coming from me, you can always look it up. So next thing you want to do is set dark grid, which is nice. And that is sns.set. We'll do that for you. Okay. What other thing that I always like to do by default, when I look at that histogram, it's honestly a little bit small for me. So um, we can change the, the size. And the way that's done is plt dot figure, and then it's parentheses fig size, and then it's, you know, vert horizontal vertical, right? Row column. So I will try something like different screens will look different maybe 10 by seven. And then, right, I mean, that's just setting things. We want to do it again. So let's try this again. I'm going to keep copying matplotlib down so that when it's at the bottom, we get something really nice, you have it, something that will run by itself. I mean, obviously, you would want this first. You, know, you can't call PLT before you actually have it in there. So let's see what this does. Just make it a little better. Name fix size is not defined. I think that's supposed to be an equals there. Try that again. Much nicer, right? Right? I mean that's that's a world of difference. You can see the the bar lines, you can see grid lines. I think that's pretty clean. Okay, so let's talk about a couple other pieces here. The X values are defined, the Y values are defined, um, but they're not actually labeled, so we can give labels. And furthermore, it's not titled, so we don't yet have a title. So let's go ahead and add those pieces in. Okay, I'm actually going to go back and improve this same text, right? You can always pick and choose different things. Do you have to have titles? Not if you're just exploring, but if you want to publish a graph, then yes. 
So, you know what? I, I'm going to change gears here, actually, and do a second one. So, I'm going to copy this in, and let's just go to one more level, to what I would say, to make it, honestly, publishable. So, I've got the new text, though. Um, it's called Publishable Graphs. Woo! That's fun. All right, so I put in the same code I had. And now I have title options, right? So what should my titles be? Well, PLT dot, what you want is actually the X label. There it is, right? If I'm not sure, I just type in X and I see what the options are. And it's a string, right? You just pick something. So CO2 levels. CO2 levels. And then, so we'll label it to X label. And see the clarity, right, of the comments is that so it's absolutely clear what it's doing. We can also get a Y label. Now, any ideas what you put for the Y label? So it's going to be, of course, plt.ylabel. Um, it's actually usually like the count, right? Because, again, if you go back to a histogram, like, like what is 30, right? Like here, like look here. Say between 360 and 365 is landing at 30. What does that mean? That means there's a count of 30 rows that have between 360 and 365 CO2 counts, CO2 levels. Got to figure out what it's counting. Um, so count can work. And then finally, you want to title the whole thing. So plt dot title. Yeah, see title is an option. Again, I'm not sure, like, is it title something? Title, and then what should the whole thing be called here? Maybe CO2 histogram. I, you know, it's nice to have more information, right? Like, 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 what are the years? You see how the year starts in 1983? Remember that if you go all the way back up to the top, it's got 1983 here. But when does it end? It's kind of cool, right? If you want more information, how do we get that? Okay, well, different ways we can do that. Quite a few, actually. I'm going to show you a short one. So if you go to a new coding cell, DF year. Now we could do things like dot describe and all this, but you could also get individual pieces. I believe it's max. Should get the max. Let's check. 2008. Cool. So, right, it's not, not updated, unfortunately, but it is 1983 to 2008. And my point here, and this is going to be a focus of this week, right? We're not just doing things blindly. We're looking for the information. We're being clear. We're seeing what's there. Okay. So this is how we basically found max year. All right, so let's run it. i look at that. That's pretty good, right? It's looking clean. Um, now for me personally, like I can't quite see it all. So yeah, you can always like tweak these things a little bit. You should tweak it so it works for you. So maybe, maybe I want a nine, seven. It was close to seeing it all. Went up a little higher with the additional labels. <laughs> How about eight seven? Wait, that no, I did it. Did I did it wrong? Right, it's the six, the vertical, right? Horizontal, vertical row column. There we go. Now I can see it all. So there is one more piece. Okay, that right there. It's a nice histogram. I don't know if you can see on my screen. It looks like a little blurry. You know, you don't rely on Colab for your final graph. You save it. Okay, so here's how you do that. I think you need to save it before you show it because I think it disappears. So how do how do you save it? Well, it's plt dot. What do you think it starts with? If you're going to save it, s a look save fig. Okay, so sometimes you can start typing what you think it's going to be a save fig, and then call it something. I would call it the title. Sometimes it's nice to actually define the title in advance, meaning elsewhere is a variable. You can put the variable in two different places. And then there's one last piece, DPI, 
which stands for dots per inch. Cool, right? This is what it's gonna allow it to look really clean and crisp. So I'm, I'll go with like, I found that 200 something is really good. I don't know what's perfect. I'll try 200 and I'm gonna run it again. Now it's gonna look the same, okay? But it's been saved with a DPI of 200. Where has it been saved? Well, if you go to the left and click on this file, okay? And again, you're, you've, you've got to run it again. You've added a save fit with the DPI, okay? So go ahead and do that. And then come over to the left, click on the file, and look at that. There it is. Now I'm going to click on it and see what happens. And then you double click. Okay, it's showing something, it's trying to show me on the right. What I need to do is download it. Okay, there's download. And it's gonna be down here, it's a PNG file. I'm gonna pull it up and show you what it looks like. Look at that. Look at that. Now that is beautiful. Okay, you should be able to see pretty good precision because this is in 4K this video, at least it's recorded in 4K. And that just has beautiful precision. And so guys, look, that's how you can do, you can like graph professional histograms using Python, okay? You're gonna get practice, you repeat those steps. And I just love it. I love the cleanliness of it. I like the clarity of it. And we can also look at additional adjustments that we can make to give it more of your own flavor.